Hey guys, Payman from Red Cage. I wanted to show you guys a way of going about creating uh, insulation detail component. Now, there are third party plugins for Revit that allow you to make custom hatches. And if you use those, great. But if you don't, this is one way. Also, we're going to be covering some of the concepts of associating parameters and nesting families and those things. So I think this is a good video. This is a final product that I made and you can see how when I stretch it, it, it fills in these notches uh, automatically. And I'm using an array in, in order to fill that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm not gonna save it. I'm gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna create a new family and I'm gonna go to metric detail item. And uh, I'm gonna start off by laying out my reference planes. Make sure these parameters are instance parameters. And make sure you equalize these parameters. We're going to add a few more reference planes that are just going to be used for placement of our lines. If you have a hard time seeing the annotations, go ahead and reduce the scale. Another thing we need to do is add reference planes for our lines themselves. And we want to add our, another reference plane for an offset. We're going to call this spacing. Make sure it's instance. And make sure it's equalized. Now for this offset, we're going to put in a parameter. Make sure it's instance. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to make it so that it's always half the distance of the spacing parameter. So we're going to put in a formula. And we're going to say that it's going to be the spacing parameter divided by two. Apply. Okay. So the reason why that is, is because we want this distance to be the same as this distance, just to keep our lines symmetrical within the family that we load this into. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and draw our lines. And you can see that we're using these reference planes to create uh, an overlap. And we just want to make sure that they are locked. And now we can flex. 
to test if it works. And it looks good. One thing we can, additionally, we can control what the overlap will be. I'm going to set this as 10. You can set it to whatever you prefer. There's no, no need to parameterize that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, okay, so now that we've got this in play, we can create a another detail component and we're going to use detail component line based and we're going to go back and make sure if you want to save it you can for this I'm, I'm not going to bother and make sure you orient it correctly see where my mouse pointer is that's the origin And now that it's in place, we can go ahead and move it. And what we want to do is now associate our parameters in this in this family. So to start, we'll make uh, an additional reference plane. And we're going to add a width parameter. And we're going to make it an instance parameter. So now what we want to do is we want to tie the width of our notches to the width of the outline. Okay, so now when we make this one 150, this will change accordingly. The next thing we want to do is we want to bring bring down our family and we want to start aligning and constraining. So we're going to pick this reference line and you can see this is the origin reference. So we're going to align and constrain. And we're going to do the same thing with the width, align and constrain, align and constrain. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to create an, a, a detail rectangle. In this case, we don't have to lock it because it's a rectangle and Revit has a tendency to automatically associate uh, lines with reference planes if you draw them on a reference plane. So we don't have to lock it. But let's flex it to be sure. Now what we want to do is we want to create an array. And we're going to array to the last one and we want to make sure group and associate is on. Now, this is why we added that additional offset reference plane. So now we can take this and we'll array and we'll choose this line as the location and we'll move it to the end. There we go. And we're going to have to make sure these are aligned and constrained as well. So make sure you're picking the right reference. Okay. Now the next step that we have to do is we have an array and we can type in the numbers uh, that we need, but that's not really uh, dynamic. And in order to make that dynamic, we're, what we're going to have to do is 
select the array and add a parameter to the array. I'm going to call it INS spacing, installation spacing, and I'm going to make it an instance parameter. We're going to hit OK. Now that we have that in there, we're going to create another formula and we're going to say that we want the insulation spacing. Oh, I think I forgot one thing. Yes, I didn't tie the the spacing parameter within this uh, project. So I'm going to add a new parameter and I'm going to call it Okay, so now that it's tied, we'll get out of here and we're going to go back. And you can see that I can now make it. We want the INS spacing to be the length. You know what, for the sake of this, uh, I'm gonna just um, I'm, I'm gonna rename that family I'm sorry I'm gonna rename that parameter so let's rename the parameter and just call this spacing and for this now we're going to go length divided by spacing apply now you can see it automatically created six and it automatically fills it in so if we went ahead and changed our spacing to 100 and i hit apply oh that oh i made it zero but if i make it one and hit apply yeah there you go you changed it to 10 and you can see that it's it, it's populated it in here as well so when you go ahead and you create a project and load this in there uh, you can easily drop it in and uh, modify it as you need need it so let's load this into the project. And we're going to draw it out. So boom. Now you have a proper uh, rigid insulation. Um, and you can adjust it accordingly uh, to whatever width you want. And you can make your spacing whatever you prefer. Now, the only caveat with this is that because there's an array, you can only, an array will break if, if it can't create two, two of the, the objects within the array. So as you can see, if we bring it down here, it's going to break. Um, so that's the only trade-off with this method. But if you're creating insulation lines that small, you're better off just drawing them. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, there are third party plugins that allow you to make custom hatches, but like I said, you might not have access to that and you might need to, uh, create some kind of pattern for yourself for the project that you're working on. This is one, one method. And this, we also covered a few things. We covered associating parameters and nesting families and how to connect them together and have them work with each other.